There were times when contestants got lucky enough to stay in MasterChef even after they made huge mistakes. But not everyone gets to share the same luck. I'm talking about Season 12's epic showdown of culinary veterans and junior contestants in the All-Star Challenge, where the stakes were higher than ever. This time, their mission was no piece of cake. The contestants had to cater to the appetites of the U.S. Coast Guard, a daunting task that required precision, skill, and creativity. Imagine the pressure. Each team had to whip up a hearty meal for over 100 hungry servicemen and women who deserved only the best after their tireless service to the country. The blue team featured seasoned cooks from seasons one, seven, going head to head with the red team, made up of home cooks from seasons 8, 11, in a battle of culinary wits. Stepping up as captain for the red team, Alejandro took charge with confidence, while Christian led the charge for the blue team with his usual flair. And the end was certain. Someone from the losing team was destined for elimination. But damn, the red team thought they were off to a flying start with their stakes. But hold on just a minute. Turns out, Ramsey caught wind that they were actually dishing out cold cuts. The tray's cold, the steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send. I mean, not exactly the sizzling start they had in mind, right? I can only imagine the disappointment in the air. Predictably, Ramsey wasn't thrilled, and who can blame him? He ordered them to crank up the heat pronto, and in a crazy turn of events, he shifted the Coast Guard over to the blue team's territory. But here's the kicker. The blue team wasn't exactly on easy street either. We, we need mash. We have no mash. Oh my god. I mean, their mashed potatoes were still in the cooking phase, and let's just say Ramsey's frustration was palpable. It practically leapt off the screen. You could feel the tension building, and I'm sure the contestants were on edge, wondering what would happen next. Despite the absolute kitchen mayhem, the initial feedback from the diners was surprisingly positive for both teams. A welcome surprise amidst all the chaos. But here comes the main event. Ramsey, when faced with an unexpected raw steak in the Coast Guard feast, pulled off a crazy move that left everyone speechless. Go, that's it, go, 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 go. Good, he's got it, he's got it. Alejandro, unfazed by the oceanic steak surprise, took a dive into a risky play that would either save the day or sink the ship. He scooped up fallen steaks, tossed them back on the grill, and voila, he was good to go, or so he thought. Hey, okay. Yes, yeah, Chef. Alejandro, Chef, now. But the real shocker? He defended his actions, claiming that what he did killed bacteria. A bold move, to say the least. Ignore that. Now, wait for Ramsey's reaction, because what you're about to see next is absolutely wild. The captain, you better have a f***ing meeting right now. Yeah, right in the middle of all the kitchen craziness, Ramsey was like, adios Alejandro, and handed over the captain's hat to Michael, saving the team from certain disaster. The team was surely on the brink of a catastrophe, but thanks to Ramsey's genius move of swapping leaders, a major disaster was averted, and the kitchen was saved from total chaos. On to the next shocking moment. I never expected that this next home cook would present such a low dish to the judges, leaving everyone in awe. It was season four. Four, episode 4, and all the top 19 contenders were standing in the MasterChef kitchen, eagerly awaiting their next challenge. The air was electric with anticipation. I'll be going, Natasha. Make yourself comfortable. They were all curious to find out more about the dish for the elimination challenge, but little did they know, a surprise was brewing. Before the challenge was revealed, the mystery box winner, Natasha, took the lead, earning the privilege of being the first to explore the MasterChef pantry. Make the right decisions in here and you could be sending. The architect of the elimination test, selecting the dish or style that would challenge each and every contestant. The pressure was on, and the contestants were in for a wild ride. Who would rise to the challenge, and who would fall short? The suspense was building. The culinary fate of the contestants was squarely in Natasha's hands. But little did she know, the challenge theme itself was a secret weapon wielded by the judges, waiting to be unleashed 
unleashed. It was the perfect recipe for a challenge, with Natasha orchestrating the first act and the judges holding the key to the theme that would elevate the competition to a whole new level. But that's when the judges decided to spice things up, throwing in a few curveballs to test the contestants' skills. Joe brought in a taste of European flair with the exquisite langoustine, a luxurious ingredient that demanded finesse. But a true master chef knows how to handle the most refined ingredients. Meanwhile, Graham unveiled the chef's dream, had to a first cut veal chop, a staple in the world's finest restaurants, requiring precision and skill to execute perfectly. The first cut veal chop. And then there was Ramsay, playing with fire by introducing the rare Stilton blue cheese, a delicacy from only five farms worldwide, notorious for its bold flavor and potential to overpower even the most skilled dishes. Us? Oh, oh man, the pressure was on. However, since Natasha had the advantage, there was one thing she didn't have to worry about, her own safety. You will not be cooking in this elimination challenge. Wow. Yep, you heard that right. She had secured her spot, which meant she didn't have to cook tonight and risk elimination. But don't think she was going to let her rivals off easy. Oh no, she still held the power to choose the ingredient for them, and she wasn't afraid to use it. And guess who she gave the most difficult dish to? She is. She's competition, definitely. She knows food. She's definitely a threat. Yep, I kind of saw that coming, considering she and Chrissy didn't exactly share the greatest of relationships on the show. I mean, that's one way to punish Chrissy, and Natasha was unforgiving about it. She was ready to see Chrissy's downfall and threw her the toughest challenge. So, what about the other cooks? Well, Natasha decided to go for the langoustine, and this decision definitely made Chrissy's blood boil. But it was time for Chrissy to show her rival what she was capable of, and the competition was heating up. But the twist was far from over. The judges then let Natasha pull her third move, and this time, she held the key to save any one contestant. To join you up there in the gallery <laughs> and be safe. And who did she decide to save? Savannah. But let's be real, it wasn't out of love for her. It was rather a strategic chess move, simply because Natasha thought Savannah was easier to beat. Anyway, enough about that drama. Let's cut to the challenge where Sasha totally stole the spotlight from Chrissy and Natasha. Ramsey took one look at Sasha's dish and dropped a comment that left everyone wondering. But exactly what did Sasha present? Cheese grits. And where are the langoustine? Langoustine on top of cheese grits. Something Ramsey was finding difficult to understand. I mean, who puts langoustine on top of cheese grits? Ramsey was left scratching his head because Sasha's dish was playing hide and seek with a crucial ingredient, the elusive langoustine. The judges were confused, and Sasha's dish was on the chopping block. The moment of truth finally arrived, and after a bit of detective work, Ramsey finally spotted the hidden langoustine. And spoiler alert, Sasha might have bitten off more than she could chew, literally. Sasha, you're out your depth on that dish because it doesn't taste nice at all. Oh. Ramsey delivered the final verdict, and let's just say it wasn't a standing ovation for Sasha's masterpiece. $50 worth of langoustine, and you give me this? The dish was a disaster, and Sasha's dreams of culinary stardom were slowly slipping away. Now, it was time for Joe's verdict, but even before he tried the dish, he hit Sasha with a valid question that left her stumbling for words. What's it worth now? With the grits, I'll say 55. Sasha, caught off guard, tried to keep her cool, but ended up saying something that would haunt her for the rest of the competition. Jesse, let's go. Bring me some form of redemption. Um, yeah, that's right. She tried to crack a joke, but forgot that this was MasterChef, not a comedy club. And just like you expected, Joe wasn't amused. I have no idea how my langoustine's cooked on the inside. I won't find out until they're cutting into it. He skipped the tasting altogether and sent Sasha's creation on a one-way trip to the trash can. And just like that, her MasterChef journey hit a roadblock, proving that even a dash of humor won't save you from the harsh reality of the show. The judges were unforgiving, 
and Sasha's mistake cost her dearly. If there's one person who truly embodied the passion and dedication required for culinary mastery, it's gotta be Adam from season eight. This guy poured his heart and soul into every dish, but despite his tireless efforts, he still found himself in the elimination round against Caitlyn. And, oh man, their elimination challenge was a real doozy. My signature chicken and potato dish. Look at it, a stunning. They had to replicate Ramsay's dish to perfection, matching every aspect, flavor, texture, presentation. It was a daunting task, to say the least. But Adam was confident. He knew what needed to be done, and he got to work with laser-like focus. The level of concentration this guy had was astonishing. The base of croquettes, nice, light, airy, truffled mashed potatoes. He was in the zone, and it was clear he wasn't going to back down without putting up one heck of a fight. But things took a serious turn when it came to making the most critical part of the dish. Even if he goes into searing it, Raw chicken or dry chicken. So, when it was time to present their dishes, things didn't quite go as planned for Adam. His dish looked and tasted amazing, but there was one big problem. The chicken was raw. This was a huge deal for Adam, who had faced opposition from his parents for pursuing his passion for cooking. He had taken a risk by following his heart, and failure wasn't an option. But when Ramsay pointed out the mistake, Adam was devastated. It's raw in the middle, chef. You could hear the sadness in his voice. He tried to hold it together, but eventually, he broke down in tears. The best brilliant effort, young man. Unfortunately, the result was clear. Adam was eliminated, but what's truly inspiring is that he didn't give up, even when things didn't go his way. He showed determination and spirit, and that's what truly matters. But the next contestant, even though they had the freedom to choose any ingredients they wanted, made the surprising decision to go with a rather odd and unexpected combination. I'm really concerned about Samantha. Would you put sweet potato with rhubarb? Oh, that sounds disgusting. Now, let's take a stroll down to episode four of season three, where we witnessed the duck mystery box challenge, which really put the contestants to the test. Samantha, full of confidence and enthusiasm, proudly announced to the judges that she was planning to create a sweet potato and rhubarb puree to go along with her duck breast. A combination nation that definitely caught their attention. A uh, five-spice pan seared duck breast over... But it didn't take long for the judges to start raising their eyebrows in doubt. Have I tasted it before? No, but I know what they taste like individually, so... Chef Ramsay, in particular, expressed his concern, pointing out that these two ingredients didn't seem to complement each other very well, especially when mixed into a puree. It goes to show that while being creative in the kitchen is important, it's also crucial to to ensure that those creative ideas actually make sense in terms of flavor. Despite the early critiques, Samantha wasn't too bothered and seemed to remain confident. She was later called over by Joe Bastianet under the assumption that she had made it into the top three performers in the Mystery Box Challenge. I was one of the only people that decided to do something truly new. Samantha, still riding high on her self-assurance, eagerly talked about how her innovative puree was something her fellow contestants might even be jealous of. But then, just when she thought she had it in the bag, the situation took a shocking turn when the truth was unveiled. Are the worst three dishes of this mystery box challenge. Well, it turns out that the so-called top three inches were actually the bottom three, with Samantha, Ryan, and Scott finding themselves on the chopping block, facing the very real threat of elimination. Samantha's duck breast with sweet potato and rhubarb puree received even more criticism. And it wasn't just about the unusual ingredient pairing this time. The undercooked duck was another major issue, a mistake that's a serious no-no in the culinary world. Press of a, a sweet potato rhubarb puree, so with a... Graham didn't mince words when he expressed the judge's collective disappointment, bluntly stating that Samantha's dish wasn't just off, it was completely off the mark. Raw duck and, like, the leaning tower of dryness. Joe also chimed in, 
reinforcing Graham's harsh critique by pointing out that the dish had multiple flaws, signaling that the issues weren't just minor, they were significant and affected the dish on every level. This is bad on so many levels, it's kind of hard to explain. As the elimination process played out, Scott managed to avoid the axe, allowing him to stay in the game and continue his culinary adventure. But that's when Ryan, seizing the moment to improve his own odds, strategically highlighted Samantha's undercooked duck, hoping to shift the focus and save himself from elimination. And you guys can't eat raw duck. No begging, you're in this competition, competing, not judging. In the end, it was Samantha who had to pack up her knives and leave the kitchen, making her the first contestant to be eliminated in season three. An unfortunate distinction, to say the least. Please take your apron off and place it on your station. You're leaving the competition. It's a classic story of ambition, meeting misfortune in the high-pressure environment of competitive cooking. So, in the grand scheme of the culinary world, where creativity and technical skill are everything, both Justin and Samantha were reminded the hard way that even when you have the right ingredients or the freedom to choose them, you have to be careful not to let poor execution and bad flavor combinations trip you up. You know, when Chef Ramsay has some advice to share, it's in your best interest to listen carefully. If you don't, you might just end up failing spectacularly, just like the contestant who chose to ignore Ramsay's warning. If memory serves, season 13, episode 6 was quite the roller coaster, especially with the contestants facing their very first mystery box challenge. And guess what the secret ingredient was? Three. Lift. <laughs> yep, you guessed it. Apples? A fan favorite and not just in the kitchen. Just to set the stage, the contestants were split into groups based on regions. Midwest, South, Northeast, and West. Each group had their own ideas about what they wanted to create, but Kyle had a special advantage. He got to decide which flavor profile each region would have to work with. Here's how it played out. Two of the regions would be tasked with making sweet dishes, and the other two with savory. And since Kyle held all the cards, he decided to play the game strategically. So can I presume we would like savory? Mm -hmm. For his home region, the Midwest, Kyle chose savory, thinking it would give them a solid chance. But then came the curveball. What are your thoughts? What will they be cooking? He decided to throw a wrench into the plans of the South and Northeast regions by assigning them the sweet flavor, considering them his biggest rival. Before making his final decision, though, Kyle gathered his Midwest team together. They all agreed to stick with savory, believing it would give them the upper hand over the competition. As for the West region, Kyle didn't see them as much of a threat, so he let them go with savory as well. And and this is where things started to get tense. And we're gonna have an apple and fennel uh, puree. Enter Wayne, the wild card from the Midwest team. After messing up with poor technique in an earlier challenge, he was given the savory task, even though he had been itching to create something sweet. This decision would set the stage for some serious drama in the kitchen. However, Wayne decided to go with couscous, which was a pretty bold choice, especially given his past disasters with risotto. Oh, no, you're not making risotto again, are you? That was enough. <laughs> that risotto would have taken you straight home. Joe wasn't exactly confident in Wayne's decision either. This with, with couscous is not so different than risotto. Oh, great. He gave Wayne a heads up, warning him to make sure the flavors were balanced just right so that the apple would stand out, but not so much that it overwhelmed the whole dish. Now, let's turn our attention to Richie, who was handed the challenge of creating something sweet. You see, Kyle knew all too well about Richie's struggle with desserts, but this time, it looked like Richie had a plan up his sleeve. I'm using the black Arkansas apple and I'm doing a honey spice. It was a bold move, no doubt, but it quickly became apparent that Richie had bitten off more than he could chew. Ramsey even stepped in and warned him to reconsider his approach. I gotta get the batter done. Have you started the batter? I've just started. I got my butter melting right now. Mm -hmm. The sweet tarts Richie was working on required a lot of time, focus, and delicate handling. But Richie, feeling confident, forged ahead. As the clock ticked down, there was growing concern about Richie's cupcakes. They didn't rise. They didn't yeah, rise. So they're going to be dense. Yep. It turned out he made a critical mistake. He forgot to add the baking powder. And what was the outcome? The cupcakes didn't rise at all and ended up looking horribly dense. 
To make matters worse, he ran out of time and couldn't even finish the decoration. But Richie wasn't the only one in trouble. Kendall had his own kitchen disaster. Oh no, this isn't looking good. But it's just churros, right? How bad could it be? Well, it turns out Kendall really messed up. He accidentally switched two of the most crucial ingredients. Like salty like french fries. There's no sugar on these. The judges were left stunned, and Reagan had one of the most memorable reactions you could imagine. Where does that? Baby. Mm. Kendall went from plating some of the best dishes earlier in the competition to presenting what could easily be considered the absolute worst. But hold on, we're not done yet. Remember Wayne and his couscous? After seeing Kendall's slip up, none of the judges were holding out much hope for Wayne. But when it was time for Wayne to present his dish, this is what went down. The puree looks smooth and velvety. I like the plating. And the taste? Even better than anyone could have expected. Oops. Absolutely spot on. Really good job. To everyone's surprise, including his own, Wayne's Harissa Spice Scallops with Apple Fennel Puree turned out to be a total hit. Talk about a complete turnaround. However, with Jennifer's dish claiming the top spot for the evening, the entire South region was declared safe. Yes, that even included Kendall and his salty disaster. And honestly, Kendall could hardly believe how lucky he got. There was a lot of pressure on me today. But here's where things really start to get interesting, because now it was time to call out the worst dishes of the night. And guess who was the first to be named? Gone whipped cream on the side. What are you calling them? Home cakes. Yep, those cupcakes that Richie made could bring down the mood at any party. But wait, Richie tried to pull a fast one on the judges by giving his dish a different name. Didn't you start calling them cupcakes? Did they become home cake? Yeah, a clever move. Or so he thought. He figured a quick name change might cover up the fact that those definitely weren't what you'd call cupcakes. All he really needed to do was own up to his mistake with the baking powder. But instead, Richie tried to play it off with a tactical maneuver. Unfortunately for him, the judges weren't having it. You wanted to call them what they became? And Joe didn't hold back with his critique. I mean, just look at that dish. There was absolutely nothing appealing about it. But did the taste redeem it at all? Let's find out. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'd love to see inside those home cakes. So uh, it's Mr. Mark. In the end, Richie's so-called home cakes earned him a spot in the elimination round. But Richie wasn't alone in the Great Fails Brigade that night. Take Charles from the Midwest team, for instance. He presented a pan-seared red snapper with apple and potato scales. Unfortunately, Charles made a glaring mistake that was impossible to overlook. I didn't know that it was wrong for me to put raw white wine in my dish. Ironically, the parts of the dish without the apple were the only ones that tasted any good. And then there was Lizzie, who served up pan-seared scallops with apple and celery root puree. But her dish had a serious issue too. So you can see right there, you've absolutely cremated the scallops. The scallops weren't just overcooked, they were downright burnt. With so many culinary missteps, the judges now had the tough task of choosing the worst dish of the night. And who do you think it was? And whilst you tried to pay homage to grandma. If only Richie had come clean about the missing baking powder, maybe, just maybe, he could have avoided elimination. But alas, that's how it goes in the high stakes world of cooking competitions. Anyway, what this next contestant faced is every chef's worst nightmare. With just 20 minutes left on the clock, Matt suddenly realized that his steak was overcooked, and there was only one way to salvage the situation. He had to start over from scratch. 20 minutes left. And now I gotta start over. In episode six, the tension was palpable as the top 13 chefs took on a high stakes, meaty challenge. And just to crank up the pressure even more, a celebrity judge joined the panel this time. The legendary Michael Mina. <laughs> yes. None other than Michael Mina was in the house, as each contestant got busy preparing a mouth-watering beef dish. But here's the twist. You won't know what cut you're cooking until you lift. The contestants wouldn't know which cut of beef they were working with until they lifted their mystery box. Talk about a surprise. To add some extra flavor to the challenge, both Ramsey and Michael took to the stage, literally offering the aspiring chefs a cooking demo to spark some inspiration. Yes, chef. Excellent. Now, okay. chef, tell me what's your dish. I am doing a Wagyu ribeye. Now, 
With new insights and a mystery cut of beef, each contestant had just one hour to create a restaurant quality dish that could impress the judges. As the mystery boxes were lifted, Chef Aaron dropped a major bombshell. You get dinner for two in his Michelin starred restaurant, Michael Mina. The winner wouldn't just earn bragging rights, they'd walk away with a reservation for two at Michael Mina's renowned restaurant in San Francisco. But the contestant who couldn't handle the heat would face the dreaded elimination. With so much on the line, the pressure was on like never before. Now, Matt, armed with the familiar filet, was really feeling the heat. He knew that expectations were sky high for this classic cut, and he had to nail it. But then, with less than 20 minutes left, disaster struck. Overcooked this one. All right, check this out. Matt realized his fillets were overcooked and he had no choice but to do something drastic yet necessary. And now I gotta start over. Time. That's right, he hit the reset button and started all over again. As the clock kept ticking, the kitchen was a mix of hope and high tension. But Matt, he was anything but confident. I'm a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got thrown a softball here and I missed. He feared that both of his fillets were poorly cooked and it was eating away at him. The moment of truth finally arrived as the judges gathered to decide who had mastered the beef challenge and who was headed for elimination. But before we get to that, let's take a look at what happened when Matt presented his filet mignon with porcini vermouth pan sauce, Brussels sprouts, and garlic mashed potatoes. Ramsey didn't hold back. Unfortunately, there's a big difference between searing and scorching. He pointed out the crucial difference between searing and scorching, and it was clear that Matt had crossed the line. And celebrity chef Michael Mina, he wasn't impressed either. Brussels sprouts, and you're just really looking for just simple perfection. Matt had missed the mark by a long shot, and the judges were clearly disappointed. Matt, let's make one thing clear to everybody in here. Even though Ramsey gave Matt a nod for his seasoning, it wasn't enough to save him from the chopping block. In the end, the construction worker from Connecticut found himself heading home, feeling disappointed in his performance, but not entirely defeated. I think my kids are gonna be incredibly proud of me for making it this far. With a determined heart, Matt vowed to keep working on his cooking skills, ready to come back stronger and showcase his growth in the future. But if you caught season seven, then you knew this elimination was coming. So it was in episode 10, and Andrea had found herself in the elimination round, and the challenge she had to face was nowhere near an easy one. Sausage in a bun. Now you must be thinking it's just a sausage in bun. How hard can it be? But wait till you hear the catch. Now you'll all have to grind and case. At the start of the challenge, Christina made it clear to all the contestants that they needed to have their sausage in a bun ready at the front table within 60 minutes. It was like setting the stage for a culinary showdown, with everyone feeling the pressure to deliver on time. At your station, you're ending down here. Yes, sir. And let's just say, not everyone could follow through with that rule. At first, Andrea was brimming with confidence. Andrea. Yes, chef. How you doing? I'm feeling good, chef. But Edward couldn't help but feel puzzled. Why opt for the Western German route when she was originally from Miami? But Andrea had the perfect response for that. Put us on a plate, and Correct. I'm a traveler, right. and I love food from other countries. Andrea was really cutting it close with time. Even the judges were starting to worry for her. 20 seconds remaining. Looks good, Terry. With five seconds left, Andrea was still standing at her station with both the judges and contestants yelling at her to hurry up. The contestant aunts had started to run to the front, but guess who didn't make it in time? Oh, three, two, one, and stop. Honest mistake, really, but not something you can turn a blind eye to. But when Ramsey took a bite of sausage, he was pretty impressed. It's incredibly moist. Thank you, Chef. He was so impressed that he gave a piece to each of the other contestants, wanting them to know what a perfect sausage tastes like. Great recipe. I think that's going to be one in my book. Really good job. Thank you, sir. Good times came to an end. She had the best sausage of the night, okay? Christina struggled to come to terms with the fact that Andrea had knowingly broken the one rule that they were instructed not to break. I am so sorry. Rules are rules, and we have to abide by them. Can you believe it? Getting eliminated for being just three seconds late, even though she nailed her dish? 
It's like the cruelest truth to swallow, you know? So that's a wrap on today's video. But can you think of more times when contestants made mistakes that got them eliminated? Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications. And if you want to watch another mind-bending video, then make sure to check out this next post right here. It's even crazier.